welcome everybody to Half the Brain, the podcast that has half the brain you do and half the facts you do. Uh, Niall, how we doing? Love you, all right? I'm very, very well, thank you. How are you? I'm beautiful, mate. I'm beautiful. I am, of course, Evil Baz, uh, aka Danny. Um, uh, first off, before we get started, we, we're joined by a very uh, big celebrity guest this month. But before we get to him, um, Niall, have you watched any Mania? I've cherry picked a few matches. Yeah. Did because you watch, as I said, did you get to Omas versus Brock? Did you? Did I you think I might. One? I think I might just leave that link unclicked. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, what? Did, what did you think of it overall? Did you? Good, bad, indifferent. I still don't like the two nights business. I know it was necessary through COVID, but there's yeah. not there's no better feeling than getting to four o'clock in the morning absolutely knackered. <laughs> Every single match is overrun by a good five or ten minutes, and you just want it all to stop. But there's always that last five minutes where you're like, "Fucking hell!" Yeah. Oh my God, what's happened there? Jesus Christ! I was a bit disappointed with uh, the ending. Uh, I've got over that. Um, we move on. Uh, but uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty decent mania. There was highs, a couple of lows. Shame at man uh, <laughs> being carried out like a Sunday league footballer who's been cropped uh, was hilarious. Sorry, uh, I know you haven't introduced me yet, but it's just Shane McMahon. Um, with all the sh- fucking shit that he's done over the years, gets injured by doing a leapfrog. Fucking brilliant. Phenomenal. Brilliant. Sorry, Absolutely. I'll pretend I'm not here. Carry on. Yeah, sorry, sorry. But uh, but yes, we um, Shane McMahon, fantastic stuff. Um, great move going into the Hall of Fame. I think was the highlight for me over the weekend. Uh, really, uh, apart from that, uh, well, Ric Flair making himself be drunk. Ric Flair inducting Great Muta and every other Japanese wrestler in the world into the WWE Hall of Fame was uh, a beautiful sight to see. Um, but guess, before we uh, begin our, uh, the meat and potatoes of the main podcast, let's get to our guest, uh, who you've already heard there, Mr. Mike Crap Tunney from the Crapsons. How are we doing, lovey? All right? Hey, I'm really good. What a lovely place you have here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Welcome to our here. stable, mate. Welcome to the Half the Brain stable. The only podcasts that I listen to besides uh, Midlife Punk Podcast and uh, Tom's Peter K one is oh um, yeah the Phoenix yeah, Knights yeah. yeah which by the way I I I said I'm a massive f- fan of the Phoenix Knights and he just hasn't invited me on so yeah fuck you um, I'll make some calls for you thank you yeah <laughs> um, no no in fact no, I don't want to go on it now it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah the only podcasts that I I, I listen to are wrestling ones so I feel like I've waited all my life for this <laughs> <laughs> well done. just like the, right the time. Place. When I waited all my life to go in a wrestling ring. And, oh, uh, yes, and let's talk about that before we get as well. So last year, that. there was an event in the on the Wirral uh, near Liverpool, and uh, the band Salt the Snail uh, I, I put on an event called Snail Mania, and uh, they performed basically. They did they put on a gig inside a wrestling ring. Uh, two bands played, Mr. Ted and Salt the Snail. And uh, I was the referee for the evening, right. so I uh, I got to uh, count the pinfalls and uh, weigh in everybody and lift up everybody's hands at the end of the night, etc. Um, Look at him; he's still buzzing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Mate, it was amazing. Mate, it was brilliant. I was in a wrestling ring. I got I've never seen in. anyone so happy. Like like when the when the um, <laughs> we we arrived quite early, and when the band had done the sound check, like they all left the ring, and like me and Danny just like kind of like looked at each other. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I really want to go in. I really want to go in. So I, I, I kind of went in and I, I did everything. I did the ultimate warrior rope shake. I did the Shinsuke Nakamura, like keeping on with one. I did Triple H's uh, water spit. I did Stone Cold's uh, top rope uh, middle finger salute. And it wasn't until I kind of like slid out the wrestling ring that I realized that the, the two guys who provided the ring, who were actual wrestlers, were just in the corner just looking at me like... An absolute <laughs> knobhead. <laughs> but at the end of the night, um, Danny hadn't been in, and he turns to me and goes, "I really need to go in. I need to go in before before they take it down." I was like, "Just do it. Just do it." So I got my camera out, and I've never seen anyone so happy in all my life. Like, 
but like he'd waited all his life for that. And I had as well, in all honesty. Like I don't right. like I never thought I'd ever be able to go in a wrestling ring again, but it turns out that they're doing Snail Mania again this year. Yeah, so right. I may have I've already I've already messaged Christy and I've already said, mate, if you need a referee, get, I, I took a, um, a stone called Stunner off him. So, so I got up and, uh, and I sung, we do this little gimmick at their gigs called, uh, the, what's it called? The, the tallest singer in the world, basically. And it's just me on his shoulders singing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, as, it's as simple as that. You can't, you can't write it. But um, Marky the Giant. Yeah, Marky the Giant. That's brilliant. <laughs> Perfect. But at the at the end of it, um, so, so what I did was I interrupted a song as they were about to start. I interrupted. I came out. I was like, "Cut my music!" I cut a heel promo. I slagged the crowd off. I slagged the band off, pretending that I used to be the singer of the band. And then and then we did the song. And then at the end, he stunned me. But the stunner wasn't meant to happen. Like I gave him a hug at the end, and I just whispered in his ear. I went, "Fucking stunner me now!" <laughs> and he just did it. And they. He pinned me, and Danny counted it, and then I rolled out and I snuck away. It was amazing. But um, I, I'm did. going back this we year. We call it in the I ring, think... mate. We call it in the ring. <laughs> yeah, we did. We really did. We're, we're ultimate professionals here. <laughs> uh, um, so I think this year I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a guest return, but I'm gonna go all out, all kayfabe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear um, Andy, Andy Kaufman it a little bit and, yeah. and turn up with a big neck brace on. And nice, um, nice, nice. I can't wait for it to be. Watch this like, space. Yeah. I it's challenge you to good. take a 3D in that neck brace. Oh, there we go. Let's do uh, it. Let's, yes. get a, let's get a table from Wix or something. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Archimania, oh. here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, God, it, they, it was fun. I've never seen a gig like it where there was a wrestling ring in the middle. Christian kept the singer from Salt of Snail kept getting out and crowd surfing on like uh, a, a pizza lilo, round, crowd surfing around. They had, uh, instead of a set list, they had wrestling belts around the uh, arena, if you will. It cut out of cardboard, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they had, a, they had a, a ladder that basically I had to stand next to and make sure no one fell off. And uh, people it, it would, like, climb the ladder, pick off a belt and read out what the title of the song was. Amazing. It's, it was unreal. I, I would highly recommend coming to the next one, Niall. You'll love it. When is it? What day is it? Do you know? It's in May. I'll tell you now. Me. Like, hang on, I'll find it now. By the power of by the power of podcasts, I reckon. I reckon we can we can we can work this one out by by just a, a slicing it in. It's on Saturday the twentieth of May in Future Yard in Birkenhead, and I think yeah. it's going to be outside this time. They've yes. got like a big garden, so there'll be more room and it'll be uh, nice and spacious. Well, uh, Earl Barrett will be there, so. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my twin brother won't be, I'm afraid. But anyway, let's get to the meat and potato of the, the bones of why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this month, we're talking about the best and the worst from 1990 to 1995 music and promos. Best and the worst. So, Crap Tunny, Mr. Mike, whilst you're Oh, here, I've got the floor, have I? You've got the floor. The floor is yours. Get us started. What's your first best promo of the night? So, what I did, obviously, because I listened, I've listened to the uh, the other episodes and I realised that a lot of the time you were kind of picking the same one. So, I've chose a few, hoping that you guys didn't pick one. But if I'm going yeah, first... Right. And I'm, the I'm, Rougeau I'm, Brothers one. Yeah, yeah very good. Very good. <laughs> Um, but I'm not going to go with anything so obvious. I'm going to go with something that pe personally I really, really liked at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah no, uh, fine. My choice for best, and it's a deep cut. Yeah. It's the Allied Powers theme tune. <laughs> Lex Luger. <laughs> Lex Luger. Luger and the in 90, I think I think it just makes the cut. Ninety five, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Bob yeah. Royal yeah. Rumble. yeah, yeah. 95, yeah. yeah. So they opened that year's Mania as well. They did against... The uh, Blue Brothers? Yeah, Eli, Eli and Jacob Blue Eli with their... Uh, I think he has their manager, uh, Zeb Coulter. <laughs> <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Yeah. So that, I'm, I'm trying to think, that's a, it's, it's sort of a, a mix of like um, the British Bulldogs theme and, and sort of... Uh, 90s jazz drums and some <laughs> so 
I think it's brilliant really because it's got it's got both of them. They're both very patriotic and like kind of merge into. I know they're not like necessarily national anthems, but they're pretty much yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah. about, Sammy, they're right, about But like the yeah. way that they kind of like mix it, I think is just perfect, and it gives you that sense of like, go on, lads. Gets <laughs> <laughs> the blood going. It really, really does. Uh, so yeah, that only is... lasted like what six months. Pops. You know what, I don't even think that because obviously I, th- I think. I, I, from what I seem to remember, like '95, so the Rumble '95, obviously Bulldog got yeah. eliminated at the end. At the end, yeah, yeah. And the, Sean, obviously the, they went together. Sean skins, at that the, point. Sean skins the cat, and it's yeah. only one foot and all yeah. that. Yeah. Bulldog got screwed. <laughs> um, I think. Do you know what? It, it, it was probably only WrestleMania, WrestleMania 11, wasn't it? I think it was, to be fair. They're yeah, only yeah. They probably think... maybe did like a Roar, I don't know. Yeah, I think like they did superstars a couple, couple of whatever, Roars. But yeah. I yeah, think um, that was... That always stood out because I think at that time I would have been seven, eight maybe, I don't know. And like I was at the point where like... That's when you really love wrestling. I, th- I think at that age, that's when you'd kind of like... You either go one way or the other. You're either going to yeah. love it for life or you're going to like it for a couple of years and then you'll never watch it again. And you'll always talk about, oh, do you, do you remember wrestling? Do you remember Hulk Hogan? Right. <laughs> Absolute idiots in my school, right? Some lad always used to call him Yoku, Yokozuna. No. Oh, no. Yoko, Yokozuna. And it used to wind me up. Yeah. Hey, there was a there was a lad I used to knock about with who was convinced and wouldn't have it. And as long as I uh, fucking explained it, he would not have it. He was convinced Kane was Kevin Nash under a mask. <laughs> and I'd be like, but but Nitro's on at the same time as Raw. Well. <laughs> and Kevin Nash is on it. And do you why? And he's like, no, no, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Kevin he was Nash. half right. In all honesty, he was half right because. Obviously, Glenn Jacobs played Fake, fake Diesel. Diesel exactly. Half exactly. right now, so kind of, yeah. You've got to give him that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Kind bad of back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back then, I think obviously I was, I was at that age where like I thought Royal Rumble '95 was an amazing event, and I think, <laughs> <laughs> and I think until like obviously I've got older and like especially with like the network because I used to have a lot of them on video, and then I think when yeah. videos become obsolete. I just didn't replace them on DVD. And it wasn't until, like, the network, until like, I've watched everything back, that, like, watching 95 Rumble and it's only half an hour long, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't that good at all. <laughs> it was but terrible. at the time, I mean, I I, I think uh, The Undertaker dis- ascending into the heavens after the... Uh, yeah, Luna, I thought that was incredible. Else, at as, at the time, that... that- that, at the time, that was a work of art to me. That, it was. Man, that was that was amazing. That and it was find amazing. out later, it's actually Marty Jannetty in a big coat, uh, yeah. just <laughs> just going into the, like what I know what. <laughs> Definitely not the highest he's ever been anyway. For the moment. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, right. I'm probably never going to be able to tell this story again. So now's my chance. Yeah. While I've got an opportunity, my nan, when she was alive, bless her, she used to live in Rockberry, which is in Birkenhead. And she always used to say to me so, that there's a lot of men that go in the house that live opposite us and they're all they're all big, yeah, big fellas. They look like them gladiators off the telly. So I, I, me nan being me nan, I just never, I never really took any notice. And it wasn't until like maybe like a couple of years later, I remember going round and we were leaving the house and me nan goes, look, there's, there's them gladiators over there. And it was Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> no word of a lie. What, what the house used to be when they used to do like a UK tour. There must have been a, a, a local wrestler that lived there. Yeah. And all the wrestlers, if they were doing like, I think it was like, you know, like the All Stars wrestling. I think it's, I think it's called. Yeah, they go in when they've been in WWF and the career's pretty much done, kind of thing. Um all the wrestlers used to stay in this house. And I never be- never believed me, man, up until she went, there's them gladiators off the telly, and then Greg the Hammer Valentine's there. Oh, my God, yeah. mate. And, it, and it also that. turns out as well, so when Yokozuna died, this obviously going back to the guy that's, that used to call him Yokozuna. Yeah. Um, when Yokozuna died, he died in a hotel in Liverpool when he was doing a look. Yeah, yeah, doing a UK tour. And a lad who I went to high school with 
who I didn't meet until afterwards, he told me that he was playing football in the street and there was a car that was parked outside and he lived down by where my nan used to live. And he spots this fella that sat in a car that looked like Yokozuna. And he goes up to him and he winds the window down and he goes, are you Yokozuna? And this guy is going, yes, I am, man. Yes, I am, man. Kind of thing. And he goes, wait there one minute. And he runs to his house and he gets Royal Rumble 94 on cassette and he got him to sign it. Okay, now. But at the time, he never believed that it was Yokozuna because he wasn't Japanese. (laughs) (laughs) But he wasn't Japanese, so I don't think it was him. (laughs) Incredible. But obviously, he he probably died like the day after that. So he was probably one of the last people to ever ever get his autograph. And he he was... uh... I don't speak to him anymore, but he's probably still got that. On that tour of uh, with Yoko Zuna, my my brother and sister went to that. I didn't go. I should have gone, but I, I never went. Uh, Sabu, Jake the Snake Roberts, and Yoko Zuna were on that tour together. Um, and was that in the era of, of Jake Roberts when he was uh, uh, beyond the mat? Jake beyond the Roberts, mat, yeah, that yeah. One. yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, yeah, apparently uh, Yoko Zina stood on my brother's foot. Or, uh, that's the story he told me. Um, but uh, it, Oldham was the date before Liverpool. Yeah, it was, oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, then, yeah. Times. yeah. Oh, there we go. Sorry, we went off, off on a bit of a tangent then. Yeah, I just no, feel like no, I've got no, all no, these no, stories. That's, 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 that's what, what this podcast is all about. <laughs> exactly, mate. Yeah, tangents are galore. Mr. Niall, give us your first... Uh, we're going music, so give us your first good music one, please, pal. Um, I'm going to go with the first worst because there's a nice oh, segment right, okay. there. Yeah. My worst yeah, like powers, is it? <laughs> was Yokozuna's. Oh, okay. I Yoko. hated it. Really? I like at the time it was all about the guitar heavy music for me. Yeah. yeah and then yeah, when yeah. he comes in with his like pan pipes of doom. <laughs> yeah. Like the little odd little. Clink. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I loved Yokozuna. I watched that documentary about him on the network, and something that always stuck out to me was the fact that when he won the title at WrestleMania, he was 26 years old. Yeah, it's mad looking back, isn't it? Like, it's crazy, crazy. Look at crazy. the likes of him and, like, Earthquake. Yes. Earthquake, Earthquake. like, 1990. Is was, like pro- 20, was only about 21. 22, 21. <laughs> like, you look he looks at him like a 40-year-old like, man. Yeah, yeah, I think... So I've got a lot of wrestling figures behind me. I've got, I think the most wrestling wrestlers I've got are uh, Earthquake and, and Yoko Zuna. I've got three Yoko Zunas of different like varieties. And Value got, for money there. Like where? And I've got at least, um, I've got at least. Oh no, sorry, is it four different Yoko Zunas and at least three different Earthquakes? So I'm, uh, I'm doing all right on those two guys. Two of my favourite guys, to be fair. There. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> Earthquake Son still goes on Reddit quite a bit. Um, yeah. Like answering questions about his dad, and he just, it just seemed like the nicest guy in wrestling ever. Uh, the the book Wrestle Crap, if you've ever read that, uh, Earthquake does the foreword for that, and he's absolutely fantastic. He takes the mick out of himself a little bit in it, and he says like, "I've been a shark." been an earthquake i've been a typhoon i've been a, an avalanche as well like yeah. so, you know <laughs> but i love joko's music i, I don't hang on, i'm trying to think because I, I just love joko because he, he was completely different and when he came in and he destroyed hacksaw jim duggan um i absolutely fell in love with him uh yeah. he made jack hacksaw jim duggan bleed from the mouth with internal injuries oh my god <laughs> yeah I mean, I loved him. I absolutely Hacks- loved him in ring. Yeah, but, Hacksaw's like, wife. Hacksaw's wife came on TV and gave us a health update about Hacksaw Jim Duggan. That's how <laughs> serious it was. I remember that. They used to do those quite regularly. Because I remember Earthquake knocking Hulk Hogan out. Yeah. And it was a big thing. And at the time, obviously, I didn't know what KV was. I was like, is he going to make it? Exactly. I think the worst bit was when he, when he, uh, he killed Jake's Jake Snake, for me. He turned it into burgers. Oh, what an evil man. Uh, you snidey bastard. RSPCA I mean, it's, it's not as over. evil as uh, the biggest heel in wrestling, the big boss man. The oh, ultimate, my The God. ultimate heel for me, that. <laughs> the funeral crasher. Dog funeral crasher. Killer. Stole a dead body and killed a dog and fed it to, and fed it to someone like, like <laughs> you do not get 
any more heel than and that. People I mean, wonder I, why I hate cops. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've just been watching a video downstairs actually on um, the, the like 39 things that happened at WrestleMania, and one of them was Jake the Snake. Um, I think it was WrestleMania five at Trump Tower. And uh, apparently, this was all off camera. Um, he went up to uh, Trump, got Damien, and just like slid it, like slid Damien across the chest. Yeah, I read that. And actually. she was like, she jumped about five feet back. She was like, I want that snake killed. I want it shot. I want it killed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Yokozuna's music just didn't have enough guitar in it for me. Just not, not doing it for you. No. No, I, I was. I, I couldn't pop to it. No, I was scared of Yokozuna at, at the time, especially around like ninety three, ninety four. I remember being like, "I don't like this man. He's he's not a nice." It man. didn't help that they did nice that. Um, nice they did the big guy camera angle as well, and you're like, "Yeah, yeah, oh yeah." But it was. I mean, I remember around this time I used to go to uh, all of my flatting with my dad. And we go in the tap room uh, of, the, of the pub that was like underneath the stadium before the games. And there was, I remember there's two people that shut the tap room up and they were both wrestlers. Uh, Paul Bearer, the minute Paul Bearer started talking for the first time on television, the whole tap room shut up and just started looking at Paul Bearer <laughs> like, what's going on there? And I remember the first time Yoko Zuna came out on Superstars and we were watching him as kids coming out and he was coming to the ring and you could just hear people slowly and quietly like shutting up and they, they were all like, fucking hell, how big's that last? <laughs> 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 but yeah, Yoko was, uh, yeah, I, I loved him. But yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one now. I'll give you that one. You can have that one. You can take that one, yeah. Right, I'm going with my best. This was tough for me. This was really tough. I'm going to give a few honourable mentions. A uh, man called Sting. Yeah. That's a tune. That is a tune. Uh, uh, Jushin Thunder Liger's music, but I think I should have mentioned that one in the 80s, really, but uh, it's a big one for the 90s in Japan, that one anyway. But my... Uh, oh, and uh, also honourable mention to the uh, uh, American males. Because once you've got that in your head, that's <laughs> never leaving your head. <laughs> At I think all. you should drop a sample in about now, Danny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, but no, I'm going to go with uh, Stan Rast from WCW. Um, the, the one about Rick and the one about Scott. Um, Stan Rast. So it, there's a line in it that is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm, I'm going to have to li- bring up the lyric because uh, to get this right, it's about taking drugs. And obviously, uh, they, they say like, "Oh, they don't take drugs," uh, but obviously, they're talking about the Steiner brothers. Uh, <laughs> uh, just bear with us one second. But yeah, Steiner eyes, absolutely fucking brilliant song from WCW. They don't get enough thanks, w, uh, praise, sorry, WCW at times for their music because in the late nineties they ripped off absolutely everybody, everything, uh, every band. <laughs> Every band that was out. And it was like shameless. Here's the story of two brothers, Rick and Scott. They don't use drugs and they're always on top. But high the time of their ability, so bow to your knees. Da, 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 da. Uh, they'll take on all comers no matter what size. There won't be any questions when you get Steiner Rise. <laughs> Absolute shoe. I'm going with that. Absolute shoe. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm devastated because I also went with that for my best one. No oh, way. No oh, way. No. So there you I, go. It, like when it first came, I was like, right, it's got to be Steiner Eyes. No one's going to pick that. And now I feel the way I did when I picked uh, the Rougeau brothers. You feel Dickie's pain from them. <laughs> Still can't believe I picked the Allied Powers and all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then, Niall. Uh, well, uh, Mike, give us your uh, give us your worst theme then. Give us your so I've got a few. Theme. I've got a few here. So I think what what Mention I might do. Mention as many as you want, mate. Mention as many as you want. Um, have you both done your best? No, no, Niall, you you you've done your worst. Danny's <laughs> done my best. <laughs> you've done your best. <laughs> I always do my best. <laughs> um, 
maybe once you've once you've given your best, I'll I'll tell tell you who all the other ones were. But I'm gonna go for my worst. I'm gonna go with Diesel's first ever ever tune <laughs> because it's a it's a truck starting and then it's a truck honking and then it's a truck honking and then it's followed by another truck. Has it not got the? Has it not got the like bluesy bit? That's the set. That's his second theme. So when he was healed, when he was with Sean, yeah. before he turned face, it was just. It saw him around that time. <laughs> you with Again. the big mullet, just the mullet, flat top <clears throat> mullet. I saw him in Sheffield uh, with Yoko uh, and Doink, and um, oh, I think Brett was on that tour as well. Uh, but yeah, that was a that was a great my mum, my mum and my auntie Sue took me to that one. <laughs> it was my fa- my first ever wrestling event was, I think it was it, it was probably one of them all star ones. Uh, the Barbarian was there, and I was only young, and I yeah. I wanted to go and get his autograph because apparently he was giving autographs at the end. Yeah, and I went and asked him for his autograph, and he wanted money for it, and I was just like. He wants money for an autograph, so I told that. But like, I, I must have been eight. I think I told the barbarian where to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, brave. <laughs> I'm not paying. Okay. I've not got any money. Okay, mate. But they had um, they had a fake, a fake cane, and they had for some reason a fake X Pac, <laughs> because hey. because that's who you want to be when you're a tribute act, you know. Oh, I'll tell you what. I miss the days of local promotions with the fake dunk and the fake cane. Yeah, they were the fake cane looked nothing like it. just had a costume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we probably watched in the same promotion, All Star Wrestling. Yeah, right? they yeah. probably went. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they probably went. Yeah, 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 definitely. The, the, um, the first uh, event I ever went to was Big Daddy at uh, the Royton Assembly Hall uh, in like 1990, uh, possibly 89. But uh, I got his picture at the end. Did he? Uh, cool. Yeah, so he he'd signed like big picture of him and stuff. And uh, yeah, he was he was he was cool as fuck. But yeah, <laughs> I can't remember anybody else who was on the card though. But I'm I'm, I'm like ninety five percent positive Fit Finley was on there because my uncle says there was probably an makes sense. Person. Yeah. Uh, so he probably was on there as well. Like, but yeah. Would Regal have been around that time. Uh, well, maybe don't know. I probably not. I don't think. I think Regal would be in like Germany and yeah, Europe about around there maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but yeah. So, so, sorry. What was your? What was the worst one again, Mike? Diesel. Diesel's first Diesel's, one when he was here. Uh, yeah, just noise. Just terrible. Just not. Just it's terrible just not, noises. It's not music. My no. other choice. My other choices were very similar. Just like noises. The like, like my other one was Skinner. <laughs> what? Which what is just is? yeah, we'll see, we'll see exactly. I was doing a bit of research, so obviously just looking at worst ones, and it's just like noises of like frogs. Oh yes, yeah. You know what? I was always dead excited like a swamp, by Skinner, you know, like a swampy when he, noise. When he first started, because he was around the time I was proper full into it, and I was like, but uh, Virgil's my guy. Uh, oh, he's one, definitely one of my guys. When he just turned. Against the million dollar man, and he was like, Yeah, for the million dollar belt, and he had those tights that made him look like a barbershop sign, yeah. Um, but 91, Virgil, 91 yeah. maybe, yeah. Virgil was my guy, um, but uh, Skinner, he always excited me when he when he first debuted and then just did nothing. It was, I, I think he was the first guy who was like, You've done nothing with this guy, you promoted him for months, this crocodile man. For a killer who's going to come into the WWE now, and you've promoted him for months, and you've just done fuck all with him. And, and they always fun. used him, and like you know, like the beginning of of like the Royal Rumbles when when it was like <laughs> you know the dead good music, and like yeah. the Royal Rumble '92, see justice, and they'd be like <laughs> Skinner, like <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> I've never then, been. I never thought I'd be <laughs> more disappointed after a build-up until the Beast of Boggo Road came along. I was oh, fucking oh, hyped oh, for him. so bad. But uh, I feel like WWE do that a lot. Like they yeah. build. But they haven't. I don't think they've done it too much recently. But like they, like they tend to give you these promos for ages and ages. I think the most recent one was that v- VM 
be a mob yeah. I think his yeah. name was. Where's he now? Like he's been oh, trailed for about eighteen months now. Yeah, I forgot about yeah. him. Yeah. There was him, and then there was um. I think they did it with Lana for ages as well. Like, like yeah. they kind of build air to come back, and then Emma. They did Emma, it with air. That was just a waste of time. That that that? She came back, Al- and then Alberto Del Rio. Though, I mean, technically, did he? You know, is anyone going to look back at Alberto Del Rio's career in WWE and go, "Ah, oh, I fucking wish he'd come back." I always, I always forget he won the title and won a rumble. To be fair, like, exactly, it's very, it's very odd, isn't it? Like, yeah, looking back, yeah. Yeah, there's them. Uh, <laughs> um, do you guys ever go on Sp- Sporkle where you can do like quizzes, right? Yeah, and it, and it gives you ten minutes to list all of the, yeah. Um, so the ones I usually do is can you name all of the WWE champions right. in ten minutes? Can you name all of the? You can do it with all the titles. I've yeah, got the Intercontinental one, one memorized. Oh, I bet you have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am, um, but I always forget Alberto Del Rio. I'm like, who was it in 2011? I just can't think. It was not memorable at all. The biggest Royal Rumble at the time, 40 man, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got. Very, I think I've got. Out there, wasn't it? I would say I've definitely got the first uh, 15 to 20 WrestleMania cards memorized. That includes stuff like, you know, Jake the Snake Roberts versus SD Jones. Damn. Um, you what? Damn. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, first ever match, Executioner versus Tito Santana. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to a pub quiz, me and you. WrestleMania. Oh, we got to, yeah. I'll be with you. <laughs> I've applied so many times to be on Mastermind for WrestleMania 1 to 10. Just, just let me have 1 to 10. As a as a subject, right? And yeah, don't give to, me twenty six. No, like no. Just let me have one to ten. Let me have that as a subject, yeah. and then I'll come back and I'll do the first ten Royal Rumbles, and we'll just do it like that. <laughs> My wrestling knowledge is great up until maybe like I turned sixteen, and then I dipped out of it for a bit because I yeah. found alcohol, and then I, I, th- I then kind of came back into it, maybe. I think I had about a, a six year gap where yeah. I'm not over familiar. Like 2006 to, to sorry, like 2007 to up until about 2011. I came I came back in 11, and then I've watched it since. Obviously, I, I dip in and out of it at the moment because it's it's not great. My my gaps usually consider, like occur with like a really good period of wrestling. So I I stopped yeah. watching. Uh, both WCW and WWE in like '96, because I was just '95 killed me. I was just like this, um, yeah. no. and I came back to it. Uh, the Raw Austin uh, faced off against Tyson, so I missed pretty much all of '97, and had to rewatch all that to sort of get yeah. up to speed. Uh, um, and then I, I got out of it again. Uh, when Vince bought WCW and, and Austin shook his hand at that mania, I was like, no, I'm done with this now. Yeah. So I missed the shit. entire invasion. There was nothing else to watch at the time, was there? But, no, I mean, obviously. No. In hindsight, with the with the invasion angle, you didn't miss much. much. No, it, oh. it was a great opportunity squandered. But then, like, I, I found out about Brock Lesnar, and Brock Lesnar's, like, debut brought me back in sort of thing. And I, and I was like, oh, just as I'd gotten out, <laughs> I I came back watching it around when when it was the summer of punk, but I think oh, yeah, Bro- yeah. Brock had just come back. Maybe had he? Um, I was what was the main? The what was the actually. roar after Mania when when Brock came back? I remember finding out that he came back, and I was like, I've got to start watching it again because. I, I think it Brock. was around two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. I thought could it was a bit be. Later than that. Uh, no, I'm well, well, sorry, well sorry, later than that. Sorry, it was like, well later than sorry, 2016, 2012, maybe 2016, 2017, around then, I think. Because that's when he beat up Cena, isn't it? Is it? And he, yeah, that would have been around it was after Rock Cena, wasn't it? Yeah, when was yeah. that? WrestleMania, yeah. 20... was it before um, seven streak ended? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was a few, yeah, so that's 20, 27. WrestleMania 27 was take it was. Twice in a lifetime. Yeah, that was the first once, <laughs> twice, three times a lifetime. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just trying to Google twice in a lifetime just to see when that comes up. <laughs> what does twice in a lifetime mean? Uh, uh, WrestleMania 28 between Rock and Show was promoted as once in a lifetime. And then tongue in cheek, people called 29 the rematch as twice in a lifetime. Yeah. So yeah, it was 29. So after 29 is when he came back in day. Yeah, I, I came around about then, I think. I don't know. I've, I've watched this since. Yeah, it would have been 29 because obviously he ended the streak at 30, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 of course. Yes. And that, that I think for me was the last great what the fuck moment. Oh, 100 percent I I I've always said that I wish that I had like camera footage of me and my mates watching that one because <laughs> yeah, oh, oh god, like, like it was the shit, it was such a shit match. Yeah. I didn't oh, expect yeah. it, and, and like when that three hit, we all just went, "What the fuck!" And like, we all just stood up, and like we just, the, the room just fell silent. Like a little what bit. made it for me was the delay between the bell and Brock's music. I was like, and then, and then the the, the uh, guy twenty one and one coming up on the screen was just well, like, and that, the guy, yeah, yeah. the guy, that guy's face, like, yeah. Heyman, uh... Heyman talks about it, doesn't he? Because you, you're left with that feeling of like, did they know this was going to happen? Is well, it I. Uh, I, I went to the Paul Heyman um, talk that he did right. in in Manchester. Um, it was a couple of years after the streak, and he it, the whole thing's on YouTube, I think. But he basically says that was that supposed to happen? Did Brock take it? Oh, he's far? a fucking master at doing that. Because yeah. who's going to? I mean, obviously, like we know, but Paul Heyman makes makes you believe it. Yeah, it was a yeah. very very good event. That actually was. Uh, it was it was called the Inside the Ropes, I think it was called. I think it's all on yeah. YouTube. Yes. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. very good. It was in the uh, it was in the comedy store in, in Manchester. It was phenomenal. They do a few tours, those guys. I went to see Regal and uh in Leeds, I think with those guys. And yeah. uh I uh he's I've got a signed share, a WWE share. I used to have shares in WWE and I've got one of them signed by William Regal up there. Amazing. So that's uh, and and I actually ripped out a page from a WWE annual that was all about Regal, and I was like, "We signed this as well." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and, and my cheesy mug meeting him is great. But yeah, so right, so Niall, have you have you got any other best ofs? Or I totally stolen your best ofs. Totally stolen. I thought this is a winner. This is no one's this gonna one. this one. This is the one, but no, here he comes. Evil, but do you want another best off from me then? Because I, I had, yeah, 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 give us a couple, yeah, yeah. I so I had a, another three, so I had okay. Mr. Perfect, yeah, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick from a film, um, I'm gonna try, okay. yeah, uh, Jim Johnson's totally nicked that from a film. Uh, it's <laughs> like it was like a, a biblical epic from the 50s, I can't remember which one, but it's one of those, you know, like where they spent too much money on the set. Yeah, <laughs> I had Razor Ramon. He, he, oh, classic! Razor was my favorite when I was a kid. I absolutely loved him. I was gutted when he died last year as well. It really was. Um, there's a yeah. There's a great um yeah. There's a picture of me. But I'll, I'll have to find and I'll send on to you. Um, me when I was young, and my mum put me in like a little waistcoat, and she slicked my hair back. And obviously, I couldn't get the the little curl, so she just drew it on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find it and send it here in a bit. Um, so he was my ultimate favorite when I was a kid, uh, and then my other favorite um, theme tune I've gone, and I think someone chose this as their least favorite last time, but right. I don't know why it was mentioned last time because it wasn't eighties. But um, uh, it's Legion of Doom. Oh, the, well, the I can't remember who said, from... yeah, yeah, it was. Um, well, it's what just very we? generic. I mean, at the time, yeah. It's got a good pop, though, hasn't it? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It, you know, when you, oh, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're out of your seat for that, but then, then everyone's cheering over the music, so you never react yeah. to When you sit down and listen to it, it's not, it's not the best. It's not the best. It's not the best. It brings me back, one, though. It brings me back. There is, there is a, I still listen to this to this day. Uh, Owen Hart's first music. Yes, I, I was going to say this one. It's, it's a belter. It's a belter. High energy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
hey. <laughs> now you know the hey that you've just said then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was gonna mention I was gonna mention this a little bit later. So I was gonna say shout out to and I put in brackets the noise. So it's a noise that is on. So who would it would it have been Jim Johnson at the time? I don't know, or would it have been yeah. Jimmy Hart? No, it would have been Jim Johnson. Would have been Jim Johnson. Would have been Jim Johnson. So yeah. He Jim started Johnson. off Jim Hart and then went to Johnson, yeah. yeah. So Jim Johnson had a habit of using the same, must have just been the same keyboard. Yeah. He got for Christmas off his mum. Um, <laughs> and what he would do is he would go an octave higher, basically. So Million Dollar Man has the same noise. It goes, ding, 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 ding. Ding. <laughs> Owen Hart. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. The classic mania theme. Yeah. Um and Brutus the Barber Beefcake's theme tune does it as well. It has this certain noise that I reckon you'll be able to splice in here now. <laughs> uh, but when you listen back, it they all make the same noise, and I've always got onto that. Oh man, Jim Johnson's stealing a living. Yeah, 100 percent he reuses theme tunes on the on the slide all the time right so if you listen to the model rick martell's music and then you yeah, listen I think to it might, it might um, happen in that one as well uh, well well if you listen to val venus's music they're the same song but just played at like different speeds like he's playing uh rick martell's uh slower sorry faster to beat val venus's so it's it's basically the same thing but sped up. Anything with a saxophone in it is the same song. Uh, anything with like heavy guitars in it is pretty much the same song as well. So if you like Vader, the background music for like Diesel's later stuff, like the the dun 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 that kind of stuff. There's a clip um, of him explaining that on Beyond the Mass, isn't there? Where yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, when he's yeah, talking yeah. about Vader, he's going, yeah, and then you've got the stomping, and it goes, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he has he has his tropes as well, Jim. Yeah, uh, yeah. Taz's theme tune, Taz's what? WWF theme tune, so the one he, oh, all right, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. he had uh, in Royal Rumble 2000 is the same as uh, the Shields music. Yeah. Um, it's the same as Taz's. Like, I don't know how they got away with that one. Yeah. I tell you what, shout out to Taz's music in ECW, which would have been around 95, around this time, which is uh War Machine by Kiss, which is uh a fucking tune that the start of that down. They were very good ECW at using using good songs like didn't RVD oh, yeah. used to come out to walk by Pantera walk, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, we'll we'll have to save this for next time when, when we get to the music because that'll yeah. be that's later on in the nineties. But uh yeah, Kiss, uh, the Pantera, White Zombie obviously was there, like intro music as well, you know. Yeah. Um but yeah, freaking good use of stuff in uh, from ECW. I think all our choices from uh the late nineties are going to be from ECW now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, no, no. Right, I'm going to give you my worst. I yeah. talked about this on the last pod, but if I had my own personal hell, this song would be on repeat all the time, and this wrestler would be on the TV all the time. Double J's, Jeff Jarrett's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate it all. Oh, <laughs> so not, bad, only, it? not only does it sound bad, but it also signals Jeff Jarrett's coming out to wrestle. And currently he's using his TNA theme in, in AEW, and I don't like his TNA theme because that also in my brain signifies Jeff Jarrett's coming out to wrestle and you're not going to have the best time in the world here now. Uh, but he, he like ruins every Royal Rumble he was in in the 90s. Him versus Razor Ramon pretty much yeah. every Royal Rumble in the early 90s and then he ends up fighting Ahmed Johnson at every Royal Rumble in the fucking late 90s <laughs> piss off Jeff <laughs> but uh, oh, he's a Tramia fan as well you know Jeff Jarrett's a Tramia no, fan no, no word of a lie um, fucking hell there's a guy there's a guy that's on like the board at Tramia and he also does uh, I think they're called Wrestle Travel and he got Jeff Jarrett to come to Prenton Park and there's a clip of, of I'm, I'm going to Google it now and send it to you. Um, 
there's a clip of of Jeff Jarrett on the pitch wearing a Tranmere t-shirt. No idea. And he's going, I'm here at Tranmere. <laughs> I fuck off, Jeff, with your gold. Fuck I found out the other day that Yoko Zuna is apparently a Newcastle United fan, and uh, Big Hacksaw Jim Duggan is an Aberdeen Football Club fan. Whoa, what? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently, uh, Shawn Michaels was a Blackburn Rovers supporter. John what? Cena, Tottenham. There's Hotspur. a video. There's a video of him um, on Sky Sports from like '95. It, it would have been so obviously. Yeah, yeah, that was back when Gloria when had Alan Shearer. Yeah. Yeah. And he supports the Blackburn Rovers. The Blackburn That's Rovers. What he calls I'm, a, yeah, I'm a big supporter of the Blackburn Rovers. And, and then he tells Blackburn to, to basically cheat because that's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, my favorite guy is Mike Newell. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I've, I've just, I've managed to fight. I don't know if you can see it, but there's Jeff Jarrett. Oh my God. Jimmy <laughs> Rovers. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck him. I love that WWE Hall of Fame. You won't like him anymore, yeah. Dan. <laughs> I, I I never liked him then and I do not like him now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate Jeff Jarrett. I don't know what it is about him, but he's just a heel or face. I can't share him. I can't I don't like him the way he wrestles and I hate all of his theme tunes. Even the shitty one he had in the Attitude Era with Deborah. That <laughs> you know what my favorite Jeff Jarrett moment is. Go on. My fa- my favorite Jeff Jarrett moment was when he got super kicked by Chuck Norris. <laughs> he just got his head taken off. Was that yeah. that would have been Survivor Series ninety four? Yeah, four five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When yeah. he was when when he was the um, the super enforcer, the super on the outside. enforcer outside, yeah, and he yeah, just yeah. super kicked his head off. It was phenomenal. Oh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris in wrestling. Brilliant. Brilliant. Have you got a promo, Niall? Then have you got a, a, a good or a bad promo for us from the 90s? Early so, 90s? I've got a backup good promo. All right. But my top one, yeah. I'm pretty sure one of you two might have picked it, is Jake Roberts from WrestleMania 6. Muck yeah, I've, I've, that was mine. <laughs> I'll go with my second one. <laughs> no, go on, because I have, I have picked another. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah the Book of Avarice one, because that yeah. is when, for me, yeah, like, at the time, it was all screaming guys, wasn't it? Like, I'm going to rip your damn yeah. head off! And he's yeah. just, like, looking down the camera going, I'm going to fuck you up. You're going to get down on your hands and knees. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, like, it's, 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 it is my, it's, it's probably, apart from the obvious Ric Flair, Rumble 92, that's my favourite promo of, of this era. It's it's outstanding. It really yeah. is. It, it just yeah. changed the dynamic completely. Like he's he's looking directly at you down the camera and he's almost whispering. Yeah. yeah. And it's like I'm fucking getting goosebumps thinking about it now. He was probably he was head and shoulders above everybody else doing promos at that time. He proper utilized the psychology. And you know but, what the best bit about that is when he when he says it and he walks off. And Gene, o- Gene Oakland just goes, Longfellow, couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just tops it off. Yeah, that's it? literally the cherry on it. And you're like, yeah. fucking yes. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. Nice shout choice. Out to, uh, shout out to the band uh, Manifest. They're not going anymore. Uh, but they had a song called uh, Muck of Avarice. And we used the full ah, brilliant. as like the start of the song. And then we kick into like this hardcore punk song. Uh, after the promo, it was, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Everything. After we've done the round of best ones, I'll give you my second choice, just in case someone's picked that one. Okay. okay, I reckon I've got okay. your second choice for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> right, go on then, Mike. What's your best promo choice? You listen to me, you go to the top. You don't listen to me, you never heard from again. Bobby Heenan, yeah. Mania 6? Again, probably, I think. Yeah. It, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Because he was on commentary for eight. Yeah, and he's not there. Oh, no, he's on commentary for nine as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah was, and then yeah. he kind of left then after that, didn't he? But So, yeah, yeah, I think it was Mania 6 when he was managing... Um, Andre. Andre yeah. the Giants and... Um, Haku. Haku. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that six or is that five? Oh, no, six, I think. No, yeah. six, yes, yeah, six. It's yeah. in the one in Canada, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
the bump. The yeah, one, yeah. He's, no, he's, he's sort of out of breath, isn't he? Because, like, he slapped Andre and then Andre, like, slapped him back. Yeah. And then he's come backstage to do the promo. Right? And then yeah, Andre yeah. leaves on, 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 on the... Uh, on, on the, the cart on the, things. On the cart, yeah, which was mainly yeah. six. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that when Heaton's, like, berating him? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm sat there watching that going, don't, 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 don't do, do it. it. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing this for, Bobby? Come on, lad. What are you doing this for? <laughs> so that's my choice. That, that's my favourite. That's a good. That's a deep cut, mate. That one. I like that one. I guess. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go with the obvious. Obviously, like yeah. It, like my favourite choice would have been Ric Flair '92 Rumble, but I, I thought there's already been a song written about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'll go with something else. For my choice. I was going to talk about, you know, the events of January 1992. But then I, I, I remembered what happened a mere month before uh, the Royal Rumble 1992, in December of 1991. On just the before you, Go on. Yeah, yeah, just before you talk about that. Um, so obviously you, you've got a song yeah. in the Crash Mats called Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, now I I knew that song before I knew you, uh, and me and Andy Gilbert, who's in Craftsons with me, and I think he's he, he's messaged you about this as well. Like we didn't know what a certain lyric was. Now it's when you say Hogan and Piper, we couldn't work it out. When you say Hogan and Piper, yeah, we it, couldn't um... work out what you were saying. So we always used to sing Hakina Baba. Now it's not. <laughs> I don't know. Like, so there you go. And it wasn't until like we got to know you, and then I was like, we've got to ask Danny what it means. We've got to ask him. Then I think eventually we're like, it's Hogan and Piper. I was like, yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> Hakina Baba. Hakina Baba. Uh, I'm like, we're, we're trying to bring that back at the minute. I'm rewriting the list. Yeah, you've got to. Just don't mention yeah. Player's name, and I reckon you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, I don't think we do in the song, but there's a there's a, a section of uh, a ladies. Uh, do you, you do mention his name right at the beginning, yeah. Rick Flair? Oh, oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah, we're reworking it to take the piss out of him a lot more in the song at the minute. And I'm re- Brilliant. Doing the lyrics, so yeah, you're not the only. Sorry, one carry on with your story. No, Sorry, you're not the only one who's come up to me and said you, you need to do that Rick Flair song again. So yeah, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so <clears throat> before the Rumble in '92, there was the Barber Shop in '91, um, with a certain the tag team. Did I ever look that? Where the certain tag team comes out on is there trouble with the Rockers? Yeah, yes. I, I forgot about this to be honest. I don't know why. I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, Marty threw himself through that window. Uh, and, uh, the, <laughs> like a coward. <laughs> like a coward. There was there was two barber shops I was gonna pick actually. I was I was in two minds. There's this one with the, the Rockers breakup, and then there's the one uh just before WrestleMania 8. Sid's turned uh full heel now against Hogan. He's left him on Saturday night's main event in the main event against Ric Flair and The Undertaker. He's left him on his own in that tag team in one of the greatest moments in professional wrestling ever when he jumps off the rope. And he turns full heel on the barbershop and fucking destroys the barbershop. And at one point, a canister of uh, shaving foam explodes in his face. And he has to cut a promo with his face full of shaving foam. <laughs> but seeing as he is the patron saint of our podcast, uh, we can't allow any Sid Viciouses to be picked in the in the worst of promos section. So just uh, bear that in mind. Not yet. <laughs> Wait, wait till you're 95 to 2000 there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God. But yeah, but I'm going with uh, I'm going with the Rockers breakup on the barbershop. Uh, one of the greatest moments. I still think about it to this day. It still gets mentioned on 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 TV as well now, doesn't exactly. it? Like, it's yeah. it's one of the all time greatest. But it, I think in the great pantheon of things, uh, sometimes it gets forgotten about. Yeah. Um, you know. And it, and it led to Shawn Michaels and, and yeah, just you know, at that time, he was a fucking he was a main the, 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 when he was on Superstars and he'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, Shawn Michaels has left the building. I used to think that was the fucking 
dickish move for a wrestler to do, but it was so just easy. <laughs> but there's nothing more heel than his theme tune as well when you listen to the words. It's, it's yeah. just like, like, look at me, I'm gorgeous. But, and actually, I probably should have picked this for one of my worst theme tunes, actually. I could not stand his version of, of his theme tune with Sensational Sherry singing. Oh, God! Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm trying to find it. Oh, here it is. So this DVD from the vault, Shawn Michaels. I fell asleep once with this on on the menu, and all it does is it plays a loop of his theme tune. <laughs> and I woke up and I knew every lyric to his theme tune. <laughs> Honestly, at times I'll just be I'll sat quietly on my own, and Sean's theme will start playing in my head for no fucking reason whatsoever. Outstanding. And I'm pretty sure it's because that night is burnt inside my brain because we it pretty loud and I just fell asleep with it on. <laughs> this doesn't relate to wrestling, but I used to live with my brother when I was about 18. My brother's a few years older than me. He's like seven years older than me. He fell asleep in his room watching Dawn of the Dead on DVD. I don't know how fall asleep <laughs> to watching Dawn of the Dead, but the, the, the title menu was a 30-second loop of just people screaming. Like, ah, ah, oh my God, ah. <laughs> and I woke up in the middle of the night hearing this noise from his room. Like, what's going on? So I grabbed the first thing I could, which was a guitar. I just like, <laughs> just, like just like booted the door in, thinking something was going on. And it was just, he was just fast asleep with, with Dawn of the Dead screaming. Oh, so, yeah. Fuck you know. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you know. The shout out so, to my brother as well, by the way. Yeah. He's, he, he, he's the one who uh, kind of got me into wrestling as well. Like, like he was born in '81, so like by the time he was like the age that I said before that like most kids either go one way or the other, yeah. he was he, he was watching it now, and he used to love WCW at, at the time because yeah. we only um we we didn't have Sky, we had like a little it it was probably like. We had, we had like channel one, two, three, and four, but I think when Sky came in, my dad like managed to get this dodgy Sky box from someone because my dad was yeah. always into like dodgy stuff. Um, yeah. God, that sounds really bad. That's sorry, no, no, my dad's really, <laughs> he, he's a lovely man. <laughs> um, but um, my my early memories of wrestling was, is because of of my brother. Yeah, he he, he used to say, "As you watch all this older stuff before you watch all, all that yeah. new stuff." So I was always says that. I used to love WrestleMania 4, you know, with like the big video box set. It was like, it was two videos because it, it was that yeah. long. Yeah, 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 but the yeah. second video was only like an hour long. <laughs> yeah. I got, I I got into to, The first Mania I ever saw was nine, properly. It was nine. Yeah, it, it probably was for me, to be honest. Yeah. It's my, my, my first memory, but and then obviously went back and watched everything. I've still got love in my heart for WrestleMania 9. Still love it to this day. I know it's people's like. It worst, gets a lot but... of stick, doesn't it? But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I love it. Yeah, two, same to be two honest, for yeah. me is the worst because I, I think I went back then and I, I saw five, and I, I, somebody got me a, a dodgy video from Tenerife of WrestleMania two, <laughs> and it's like long play, and I've only got a short play video. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it was like all like weird static and stuff like that. But when I did actually get to watch it, you are watching WrestleMania two. And I was excited as I could be to watch the wrestling event, and it's WrestleMania two. Yeah, and uh, there's just nothing on that one at all. WrestleMania eleven's my worst, in all honesty. I don't like eleven at all. I think. Uh, um, what is it? That's the it, two. That's the Iron Man one, isn't it? No, that was twelve. Oh, that's twelve. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Eleven's um, main event oh, was God. Bam Bam yeah, we, versus LT. Wasn't yeah, it? We, that's the one we went through last month. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an awful, awful yeah. mania. Yeah, I will yeah, defend yeah. that main event to the hill. <laughs> <laughs> You'll die on that hill alone. Oh, well. so. Yeah. <laughs> and it also has the worst rendition of America the Beautiful as well. I'm not really? going to be cruel or anything on, on the poor girl who sings it, but I think she had to step in for somebody. And yeah. It's just dreadful. She she knew the words. She just didn't have enough. Real yeah, it's a bit like a Crapson song, really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want my honourable mention, Danny? Go on, go on. Swelling of the fluid sac surrounding the brain, contusions, ear bleeds. These are the things that our dreams are made of: power and glory. The Legion of Doom. 
Excellent. Why you just go? They just go off on Gene. I think it's either Hawk or Animal. Like halfway through, it's just like what a rush. Was that when they came out with Paul Ellering? Yeah. WrestleMania eight. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. When they just yes. talk for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, it's just a talking segment, isn't it? I think yeah. that's when they've... Is it that when they've just re-signed, I think? It was the first time they came out with Paul Ellering, I remember, because I remember um, I remember Bobby Heenan on commentary goes, Do you, you know who that is, don't you? That's Paul Ellering. It was like, <laughs> yeah. And I only know that because I actually watched that the other day as well, so that's kind of fresh in my memory. Well, I've yeah, got a week. Been... Off, I've got a week off work coming up. I've got uh, MPF this weekend, and then a week off. So there's definitely going to be some old school manias watched. Excellent. Yeah, my, uh, all week their off. match with Power and Glory, wasn't it? Power and Glory. Roman and Hercules. Hercules. What yeah. a fucking tag team they were! Power and Glory. I, I, I want a pair of their shades where it went off to one side it was like yeah. a pair of shades to the other side oh what a tag team they were power and glory oh my god I've not thought about them for years Jesus <laughs> that is a, a hastily slapped together tag team if ever I've seen one but because they got a name that uh, like you know legendary <laughs> that was the year that was the year of Warlord when he got Eliminate from the Rumble and that the quickest time as well, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, your Warlord was uh, Powers of Pain. Sorry, yeah, mixed up with, yeah. The, with the Barbarian. Yeah, uh, yeah. Power, uh, Power and Glory was Hercules and Paul Roma. Yeah, Paul Roma, the uh, the shittest member of the Four Horsemen. <laughs> yeah, officially. <laughs> worse than Mongo, Mongo with Michael. Mongo with Michael. He, he, a hundred percent worse than Mon Mongo. Yeah. Mongo was in it at the best, one of the best periods. I feel, but there we go. We'll we'll save that for another that debate. Yeah, that's another that's another episode. <laughs> give, give us another honourable mention, Maggie. Have you got any more for, for best? For best? Uh, no, yeah. I just had them two. In all honesty, right? Sounds okay. Yeah. Have you got a worst? Give us a worst. Oh, are you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Hey, go oh, on. are you ready for this? So. I'm going to give you two because one is a promo and one's not. One's a completely different entity in itself. I'm going to give you the, pro I'm going to give you the promo first. And I reckon one of you might have it. It's, um, and that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. Owen Hart, Royal Rumble 94. <laughs> As Brett <laughs> is being wheeled to the back, surrounded by referees and that strange man who looks like... Um, Wizzle Gummidge. Wizzle Gummidge. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dream? Yeah. <laughs> you watch the same YouTube videos as I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brett is getting wheeled to the back in a lot of pain. And Owen Hart is getting interviewed backstage. And it's on the screen, the same screen that The Undertaker gets, gets <laughs> sent to heaven on said, yeah, later yeah, on. Yeah. And he's just, he says the word selfish about 10 times because you're <laughs> selfish Brett you're nothing but a selfish brother Brett That's, he's got he's got spittle he's got being spit. collected all, all over his I place. know I can't remember who was interviewing in all honesty it, it might have been um, I bet it's uh, Sean Mooney Mooney, it's Sean yeah, Mooney. I, it, yeah. I, I think it might be Mooney yeah, yeah. around that and, time um, yeah. And he's, he's got spit on his mouth, and then he just ends with, and that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. But as, as soon as he says it, you know that episode of The Simpsons where you where um where Ralph takes Lisa to the to the cinema on, on Valentine's Day and they pause it because it's on like the crusty show, and he goes, and you can pause it, and that's the moment that you see his heart breaking too, because he knows what he said. <laughs> and it's just like ah oh. You can apply that to any Sid Vicious promo though. Yeah, exactly. he's always got that look that's just like, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't, did I? Uh, I watched before the uh, we're live, pal. Hey, we're live, pal. And <laughs> you can see in his face, he's tried so hard to get the word, um, I think it's sophisticated. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and he tries to get that out, and then he tries to get the word, um, uh, or, um, uh, Oh, I can't remember. I can't, I'm doing a sit now. I can't even remember what it says. <laughs> but there's, there's two big long words after each other, and he stumbles over both of them. And then Jim Ross says to tell him, oh, well, I'll pal. 
<laughs> it's phenomenal. I think he's just he's just the unluckiest wrestler in history. He is. I, he's been involved in so much. Breaks his leg in the ring, shits himself in the ring, can't yeah. do promos. Doesn't turn but, up to um to raw reunions whenever he's booked. Yeah. <laughs> Prefers Little League Baseball. Little League Baseball, yeah. <laughs> That's why he's the patron saint of this, this podcast. <laughs> Do you want my, uh, my on, separate yeah. entity? Go on, what's your separate entity, right. yeah. <clears throat> In 1993, WWF released an album oh, yes, they did. called WrestleMania, the album. Yes. Which was produced by uh, Simon Cowell. Yeah. So I believe. Um. And besides the first song on the album, yeah. everything else is an atrocity. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, you've got it there, haven't you? I've got the, I've got the picture. <laughs> you've got it. Of the <laughs> dog in USA. Right. Um, right. So hear me out, right? So the first song, WrestleMania, the tune that we all love. Yeah. I, it's not aged well. No, I've got that on seven inch somewhere. Nice, brilliant. Yeah, I've got, I've got that. <laughs> Now, I've not got the album, but I've got the seven-inch single. Now, why would you start a song called WrestleMania <laughs> with... by saying the words, I Welcome. said, are you ready yeah. for the Survivor Series? <laughs> Who will survive? <laughs> why would you do that? Come on. It and... goes to show that there was no research put into this song. Do you know who Second says of that? All, the... Do you know who says that, by the way? I said, are you ready for the Survivor Series? Do you know who I don't know that, that bit. I know that, who will yeah. survive... Oakland. That's Oakland, but uh, that is uh, Jimmy Garvin. Uh, oh, okay. Beautiful WCW, uh, what, what was the, with Hayes, Freebirds, Birds, big yeah, black. Yeah. He was in WWF for, for like, he was in WWF for like for two or three months, but around that time, and, and it obviously it was leading into the Survivor Series, and he, I think he's on a Superstars at the start, asking the crowd that, basically, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah! and then he runs down the crowd they run down the card to for the Survivor Series. Yeah. Well, yeah. there's a running theme there because on the front cover of this WrestleMania, the album, mm -hmm. you've got Undertaker and Bret Hart. Okay. We'll, we'll put them to one side. They stayed with the company for a long time. Uh, then you've got Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who left in 1993. You've got the Nasty Boys, who left in 1993. Big Boss Man. <laughs> who left in 1993. <laughs> Macho Man, who left in 1994. And then Tatanka, who probably made it until about 95, and then he left as well. <laughs> it, it, that would be like releasing an album now and having Dolph Ziggler. And, like, I don't know. Anybody who's gone to AEW yeah. in the last yeah. six months. Santina Morella, yeah. I just don't understand. What I also don't like about it is that the fact that it's just promos looped over a, a generic 90s tune. They reused the Big Boss Man twice. And they're both promos that are exactly the same, just worded a bit differently. Is, uh... I was a law enforcement officer. And I'm, I'm, I'm here in the WWF. <laughs> it's a very hard time. And then he says it again, just in a different order, pretty much. <laughs> What's the Undertaker song? Is it Back in Black? We're getting to that. Oh, right. Okay. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in the WrestleMania song as well, Tatanka's one is the worst. He's, he ends his promo by saying, Tatanka will be successful. <laughs> Now, <laughs> say the line, pal. <laughs> we move on. To, we move on to the rest of the songs on the car on 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 on, on the on the album. So you've got what you mentioned before, Hacksaw Jim Duggan's USA. USA, you were yeah. say with a pretty fat, pretty fat techno beat underneath that one, <laughs> which I don't think's aged well though. In, in no, all honesty, not at all. you've got not at all. you've got the Nasty Boys stomp. <laughs> You've got um, Bret Hart's never, never been a right time to say goodbye. Was it? No, nope, never been a right so. time to say. I can't remember. Um, you've got the Undertaker, the Man in Black, the Man in which, Black, that's yeah, it. which was um, 
totally out of character for who yes. the Undertaker was. And at, yes. at that time, he was he was this he was this zombie. He like like everyone believed it, and yet they bring out this like like what are you doing? I um, will make you yeah. rest in peace. And it's basically just promos that they've done on an episode of Superstars, and it's just been brought into a song. But the worst one, obviously, there was a, there was a few more. They had Mr. Perfect, I'm Perfect, which was just his theme tune, jazzed up a bit. You had Randy Savage one, and you had a big boss man one. But the worst one is Tatanka. It's called Tatanka Native American, and it just goes, Tatanka! Buffalo, the tanker, buffalo. Now I was I was playing them out loud to my wife yesterday, and she said that that sounds like you know on Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, you know the little mask that he he puts on when you get it, and he goes like that's what it sounds like. <laughs> she also said that the whole album just basically sounds like you know in music class in in in, in high school yeah. when you'd get when you'd get to have a go on the keyboards and, and yeah. put the headphones on and you'd have like little preset things. The demo little drums. I'm like, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Just yeah. basically, that's the what... The teacher's the gone, yeah, lads, go and write a song about a native Indian. Tatanka. Tatanka. Buffalo. <laughs> to tank it. That's what the whole album is, and <laughs> although, although the WrestleMania song has as fond memories of it, my kind of youth. Um, sorry, I couldn't think of a word then. That just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that song lasted a good few manias as well, didn't it? And yeah, oh, it's, like it's still sort 10, of crack out a bit ten to now. Ten to fourteen, maybe I don't know. And it yeah. was it was later on a uh, Linda Linda McMahon's Advanced. theme tune, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Linda's theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Of Besides course. that song and everything that I've said, that's all right. But everything else on it, just, no. At some point, they must have got some wrestlers together though, because on the front cover of the the or the, the slip sleeve for the WrestleMania song on the seven inch, Bret Hart, the Nasty Boys, the Tanker, and uh, Big Boss Man. And if you watch the video for that song, they're all yeah. in the studio together at one point as well. So um, it's probably just whoever they had available and they just, ah, you'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's, who's on tour promoting uh, SummerSlam 92 in the UK at this yeah. time? There you go. Yeah, actually, good point. Because then it, it uh, would have been recorded then. Yeah, and who's available for a photo shoot in a studio <laughs> and do a yeah. quick music video and we'll slap it out. Be right, don't worry. No, we'll it. get the nasty boys in, they'll do. No, they're right, yeah. Big boss man and the nasty boys. No, no good fella. Uh, Niall, what's your <laughs> worst of, worst promo from the early 90s then, mate? It's Follow again. that. <laughs> it's got two names, this promo. All right. It's either Crash the Plane or Ho Kogan. <laughs> oh, oh, are we doing that? Oh, oh. I, Hulk Hogan, have a question to answer your question. As you, Hulk Hogan, travel to WrestleMania by conventional means, the normals you travel with experience malfunctions. As you realize, all that is left is total self-destruction. Do you, Hulk Hogan, show self-pity? Do you, Hulk Hogan, try to reason why? And yeah, at that point, I just check out. Okay. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, more like. Take the plane into a nosedive. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. Assume the controls. Hulk Hogan. In case you hadn't guessed, Mania 6 was my favourite of all time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that whole champion versus champion, I think, was quite like unique at the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And of course, you had your two biggest men in the company. Hogan didn't like the fact that he wasn't going over. And as soon as that bell rings, it's all about Hogan again. And I think that's the first time that I thought, you absolute shit. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the first ever springs out the ground of cunt Hogan. Of of like, oh, this guy is a proper little shit. He can't just leave it for five minutes, can he? Uh, I mean, to be fair, actually, no, uh, mainly a four... Uh, when when Savage wins the belt, 
Hogan's right there in the ring with him. There you go. Here's the belt. Come on, let me have my picture taken with you. Um, he was always there, was he, as well? My mate always. Martin absolutely hates him just for this reason alone. Like <laughs> He's always got to be there. He's always got to get the limelight. WrestleMania 9 comes out yeah. at the end and yep. like yeah. ruins ruins the moment. A yeah. perfectly yeah. Absolute bastard. workable main event. Spitz is, Spitz is dummy out in the Royal Rumble 1992 when he got eliminated fair and square. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, you know. So what was yeah, the story behind, be his, um, behind his black eye at WrestleMania 9? Ah, yeah, there's many a story yeah. behind that. So he says he got hit in the face by a jet, a woman on a jet ski. Um, Checks a, out. A couple of people have said <laughs> um, Savage punched him because he was sort of hiding Liz uh, away from Savage and uh, 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 tried to get off with Liz. So I Savage gave him one. On um, Dark Side of the Ring. Dark Side of the Ring, yeah, I was about to say that. Um, Liz went to the Hogan's to like yeah. hide with Linda, basically. Was that around yeah, the same yeah, time yeah. then? I think it's around that time then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of theories of like, is it Macho Man or is it what Hogan said? And uh, it, yeah, if you look at it, it looks like a punch to the face, a proper one, rather than a smack to the face off somebody's like knee to have a jet ski or something like that, you know. Um, in storyline, didn't they use the, the million dollar money? Man got, money in, yeah, yeah, got somebody to yeah. pay him up, yeah, 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 yeah million paid dollar someone to try IRS. and get Hogan, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's a proper Can't good shiner, though, proper good shiner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's your worst of now. That's a good one, that. Mania 6. Wolver Warrior. Take it to a nose dive. Ho, ho, gang. Ho, ho, gang. Uh, <laughs> ho, ho, gang. Oh, so, I like the growl he does in it as well. Though. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. Tiger it halfway through it. You weird little man. That reminds me. And this is going to be, like, way later in the in the podcast. The... Yeah. Uh, the legendary Undertaker, rest in peace. It was like, rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if, yeah, later on, we're going to be talking about John Cena's angry face as well. The legendary just... <laughs> you bloody kids! That kind of face. Uh, right, my my worst... I had a, I had a bit of a thing picking me between these two so i was gonna pick absolutely everything that the million dollar corporation did on the microphone yeah. and then i thought oh, well no, i suppose you can't really pick that because sid's in it and the only real bad thing that they did was the we're alive pal that was part of the million dollar corporation uh in your house so i'm gonna pick men on a mission Mole Mabel and uh, Oscar, oh, wow, yeah. the the music promo for for those guys debuting. Yo yippee yo yippee yo yippee yay! This guy's Mabel and this guy's Mate Mo. And, like I just, just fuck it is so pish. It is so pish. <laughs> they don't care about what's at the table. They only care this guy's Mabel. Yo, yippee, yo, my name is Oscar. Oh. Show me your hands. Yay! And then it'd be all just like, oh, mate. But everybody um, loved it, didn't they? They fuck it. I hate it. Oh, you Americans. <laughs> oh, you silly American people. So, what's this new thing called rap that I've heard so much about, pal? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's 1994, Vince. How are you all hearing about it now? <laughs> NWA have already split up, Vince. <laughs> yeah, come on, mate. Well, we've got men on a mission now. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> From what I've heard, apparently Vince McMahon only really listens to ACDC. I, which I believe that. Which does explain why they had a song as the SmackDown theme tune quite recently. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon they were just struggling and Vince walked in the room once like, like they came up with all these ideas and they had all these big yeah, big pop names. I think it's because... Uh... Like, no, it's got to be ACDC, <laughs> pal. <laughs> Everyone was sick of Triple H bringing up uh, Motorhead or Creed. So they were like, listen, lads, you can't have me Creed or Motorhead. Who are we going for? What am I going to do? Attack, attack, attack. 
<laughs> I guarantee you that that's what he calls him. And no one's yeah. ever fucking, no one's ever no one's corrected, uh, corrected him. him. No. Uh, Vince Stacy, after that, where's that CD? I got to love that song. Where's the those guys with the school kid that plays the guitar? Yeah, the one about the balls. Play the one about the balls. <laughs> I the one that has that little balls. girl playing the playing the guitar. Got big balls. Girl. Have you got big balls? No, I've got big balls. <laughs> oh. really imagine, cool. imagine an ACDC tribute band, but somebody dressed up. You know how you've got Elvana, so you've got an yeah. Elvis, an Elvis Nirvana. Imagine an ACDC, but WWE, Vince McMahon singing. WWDC. <laughs> WWE. <laughs> <laughs> So You've been thunderstruck, thunderstruck pal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start that band. Pal. Let's start that band. AC Vinci. There you go. AC Vinci. Oh, yes. <laughs> so let's we let's start that band. Yeah, yeah, we'll all take it brilliant. into it. Yes, I'm up for that. <laughs> are we still, still going to do the uh, the stand back cover? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm you're back. right. I am back. Yeah, get in on this, mate. It's going to yeah. be huge. We're going to do that. We're going to do a cover of that and uh, with the B side of uh, Land of a Thousand Dances. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I watched that video. I watched Stand Back at least five, six times a year. It's brilliant. <laughs> Whenever I'm feeling a bit down, it's like, Vince, do your thing. Go on, Vince. Bring me back up, mate. Bring me back up. <laughs> what do you right. think of his moustache now, by the way? Oh my god. Oh my god. He looks like an anime bad guy. He looks yeah. like um a Japanese drawing of like uh evil Vince McMahon. If you were if you said to a manga cartoon artist like in Japan, draw an American bad guy. <laughs> yeah, that would be him. It would be that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the mustachioed man. Someone the is um Someone's mocked him up to look like uh, M. Bison from Street Fighter. I saw that. I saw that. That looked absolutely fantastic. Well, because, yeah. One of, of the course... um, one of the best comments I've heard about it is uh, it looks like Vince is having a midlife crisis. So we're going to see him for the next like 70 years. He's going to live to 150. Oh, oh, oh he's yeah. going to Walt Disney at any. He's going to yeah. get frozen, oh, <laughs> cryogenically yeah. frozen. I want my balls frozen, pal. <laughs> oh, my grapefruit's frozen. What am I? That's that's what is in that Stanford Towers, you know, that big tower block that they've got in Stanford. <laughs> it's just cryogenic units. It's full of it. There's no people working there. It's just one scientist and a, 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 a warehouse of cryogenic units for Vince's seed. Put my seed on fucking frozen now. <laughs> so what I reckon he'll be eventually. You know, on is it? Futurama, where you're just, where you're just a head in a jar. Yeah. yeah, that's what he's gonna be forever, and he'll and he'll still manage to talk both quads. Yeah, but yeah, and he'll <laughs> still have the last word on bookings. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Oh yeah, it'll Raw be will rewriting. Get, Raw, yeah, Raw the... will get rewritten like up until the moment it starts. Uh, wrestlers will be queued up outside Vince's office to come and talk to the head just before Raw. <laughs> uh, he's already rewritten it three times today, Raw. So I think yeah. like mania was a big swerve because people think that Vince like had the last mat, uh, the last word on the uh, Reigns Rhodes match. Mm. I think it was Triple H after the whole smashing up the throne thing on AEW. <laughs> yeah, you've that got a would just valid be... point there. But that would that would be perfect. Like yeah. build him up for a year, make him think for a year, mate. That's you're fair. gonna be you're and gonna then be tell fantastic. him on the day. On no. the day of hey, you just go while his wife and his kid are in the front row. Yeah, and his mum's there. While go, Not his, a fucking chance. While one of his best friend's son who died is in the front row. While his dad's <laughs> watching from heaven. While Goldos is banned from ringside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't see him, did we? You just go up to him and just say, Not tonight, kid. You'll be stardust in a few months. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I just make him think, oh shit, what have I done? Oh no, what have I done? That's fucking incredible long term booking, though. Oh, I can't man. wait. I can't wait until the young bucks finally make their debut, and then they just like within two months, they just they just come out dancing. Like that's it. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Right. In a... 
I guarantee you, after the minute night two of uh, WrestleMania finished, Tony Khan received three text messages. One off Dax, a.k.a. Bald FTR, saying, I fucking love working in AWME, mate. Another one off Miro saying, uh, got any storylines for me, pal? <laughs> and another one off uh, Andro L. Edlio saying, uh, I, mate, me, you know, I love working with Sammy Guevara. Me, me, me and him have made up. <laughs> uh, can I be used on telly? Because I guarantee all three of those lazy bastards will shut the fuck up about wanting to go back to WWE. You know, uh, Big time. We've been yeah. back. And I think a lot of people will go, oh, shit. What have and I, I done? I think if, if MJF goes they'll fuck him up as well I think they really yeah. will I, I don't think at the minute they've got any where near what the internet would have you believe the power you know of you know like over the storylines they've got one good storyline and now at the minute they're dragging it out the the, the bloodline thing is being dragged out it should have ended at many it should have ended and it's not going to yeah it's not going to. It's not going to end till he's had a thousand days as champion. That's what they're which going is, for. Which is coming up. I think in, in the next forty days. I think he hits it. Uh, he wants yeah. time off as well. Yeah, but, but he, I thought he was going to get it at Mania. I, I did, and then I thought, oh no, SummerSlam. But the thousand days is like two it's weeks coming after. up. It's about a month and a half, I think, and then I, it, it's after SummerSlam when he's a thousand days. I checked it before. It's like a two weeks, I think, after SummerSlam. Uh, he's when he's up, so it's like end of August, September time. Like that. That's going to be something like fucking Reigns versus Armas. Uh, oh, I hope, I hope to God. It's I think, I think, like you said, uh, Mike, I think if MJF comes to WWE, they're going to EC3 him. Yeah, yeah, oh 100%. god, yeah, yeah, it'd be in the background of a promo doing absolutely cock all after three weeks. They'll have let's they'll have Jerry Lawler fan Dan Golden. Let's all do the MJF. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. On that note, thank you very much, Crap Tony, Mr. Mikey, for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. I've had a good laugh. Nice one. Cheers, lads. Excellent work. Excellent work. Thank you, Mr. Niall. I shall uh, I shall see you this weekend for MPF, but I'll also see you next month. Next month, I've got a choice for you, mate. Right? Ooh. We can either do Tag teams, best and worst tag teams. Right? The worst just popped into my head as soon as you <laughs> said tag teams. Or, or we could do, um, well, I, I don't know how we could do this really, but I wanted to do like promos that have been sabotaged, talking about Fandango and Jerry Lawler being put in the ring, etc. <laughs> Promos that have either been sabotaged by the WWE or by the crowd. So what should we do? Tag Ooh. teams? I reckon pro- I reckon sabotaged. you should go with in memory of uh, Butch from the Bushwhackers who died this, oh, this yeah. week. I think you should go for tag teams. Yeah. Tag teams. Any era. Yes. Any era, any any size, shape or form. Uh, two of the best, two of the worst as it's a tag team, we'll do it that way. And then uh, worst time, locked in. Yeah, <laughs> next time Jordan from Pod Punk Podcast will be a uh, Punk Pod, Pod Podcast. I can never get the name of that right. Pod Punk Pod Punkcast. Pod Punk hey. Pod yeah. Punk Pod, Pod Podcast. Is coming <laughs> on. He'll be here. He can explain it next month, Jordan. But uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be joining us. He's got a cardboard cut out of Dwayne the Rock Johnson in his loft, uh, so he can explain that to us next month. Uh, but yeah, Brilliant. thank you again, Mikey, for joining us, mate. Thanks very much. Uh, Next no time worries. when you're doing uh, an attitude era one, get me on again. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll, we'll get same. to the attitude era. Oh, we'll in fact, the same, uh, after last month's podcast, I don't think Niall actually knows when the attitude era is. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll step in then. You can have a day off, Niall. <laughs> Listen, it was the I had a vicious moment. Yeah, yeah. I had half the brain then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you next month. Bye. See you later. See ya.
Oh, you're 